You don't want to play without getting the heck out of here. I mean, if you're not going to recover great crap, if you're just going to let him drive by him, if the rest of you are going to let him catch the ball outside the three-second lane, drive all the way in there without one man challenging him, then I'm leaving and you guys are going to run till you can't eat supper. Now I'm tired of this baloney. I'm sick and heckin' tired of an 8-10 record. I'm heckin' tired of losing to Purdue. I'm not here to heck around this week. Now you may be, but I'm not. <laughs> Welcome to Oak, a podcast. Your hosts today are Griffin Most, Jason O, Wyatt Holkers, and absent today is our other co-host, Laurence Gauder. Well, it's our first podcast. We don't know what we're doing yet, <laughs> sort of. Not a clue. I was going to say to you about his last name next week. <laughs> oh, Alright, um, so yeah, so we're going to get started here. Um, so a quick Gopher Sports recap. Uh, your third ranked women's volleyball team is currently 19 and 2 overall, 13 and 0 in the Big Ten, which is first in the conference. Um, their recent game defeated uh, the Wisconsin Badgers on Wednesday. Uh, on Halloween night in four sets, and was it the first four set? First game? four set game in the Big Ten. They've been three set sweeps all the way through. Yep. So that's crazy right there. <laughs> but they're still growing strong. So go women's volleyball. Uh, their max. Their their next matchup is against Michigan State uh, tomorrow night, Saturday at home at the Pav. So that should be another three zero game. I'm hoping to get the <laughs> band back in them. Yep. What can this team? What can't that volleyball team do? Honestly. True. Um, what's next? Uh, Keep my so men's so hockey cool. is currently ranked 8th and 10th, um, depending on the pairwise or ranking system. They're 1-1-1 one, one, one overall. Um, they're coming up a ugly loss, I think, a 3-1 loss against the longtime rival, uh, North Dakota, uh, last weekend in Vegas, of all things. Uh, there was a lot of news out of Keith Tuttle. Uh, President of the Icebox saying uh, that we uh, did not show up to Las Vegas. So, um, <laughs> I mean, they just need fewer penalties, honestly. That that's that true too. That hurt. Yep. But the fan base got to show up for them. Yes. Yep. So then, um, their next series is this weekend, today and tomorrow, against number four ranked Minnesota State Mankato. Uh, tonight at home in Dream Arena, Mariucci, and tomorrow night at Mankato State's Verizon Center Arena. But I'm hoping for a 2-0 sweep, but not I'll go with 1-1. 2-0. The, the, pair, the pair wise matters. 2-0. <laughs> for me, at least. Um, next, uh, number two ranked women's hockey. There were 7-2-1 overall. 5-2-1 in the WCHA, which is first in the conference. Uh, the recent series, they split 1-1 against the Badgers last weekend. Um, their next series against... Uh, non-ranked Bemidji State Beavers tonight and tomorrow at home in Ritter. Um, I'm not too all worried us. about Bemidji State. I, I don't think know. that's quite the week. I think we're still starting two different goalies, though, if I recall. I'm, I'm not too concerned about what the women's hockey team is doing. They usually do pretty well. So. Yep. So another an eighth national championship, maybe? <laughs> Brad <laughs> Frost. He's, he's, he's got that on good. his mind. Yep. All right. Uh, next up, uh, the so both men's and women's basketball hasn't started their season yet, but they will next week. Men's basketball will start next Tuesday, uh, the sixth, at home in Williams versus Omaha. Um, but they did have an exhibition game last night uh, against Minnesota Duluth. Final score being one hundred nine to fifty three. Go for victory right there. Next up, uh, women's basketball. The Lindsey Whalen era begins. In uh, their season opener versus New Hampshire next Friday, the 9th, at home in Williams, which is a race showed out. Oh, sold out. Sold out, yes. And now we segue to go for football. Um, right now we have a 4-4 four four over our record, 1-4 in the Big Ten, which is tied for 5th in the West Division. We are also tied with Illinois and Nebraska. Um, the Illini are right now sitting at 3-5, 1-4 in the Big Ten. Tied for fifth does sound better than tied for last, Jason. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> True. Um, Ouch. So we still lead the overall series. And just so you know, um, Illinois was also a charter member, but for some odd reason, we haven't played that many games with them, unlike Wisconsin, Iowa, Northwestern. 
but we still lead the overall series, 38 to 29 to three. Uh, we're currently in the lead um, with the currently on the three game win streak from 2015 till now. Um, but in our last seven meetings, we won the last six or seven. That one loss was when in 2014 when they went 84 and went to the uh, Citrus Bowl. Which is, you should not have lost that game. I didn't realize that Illinois had a good season in the past 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's on me. All right. Um, so, first thing we're going to start about starting quarterback. Uh, number two, Richard Freshman Tanner Morgan is starting this weekend. Um, Zach Annick said who was our starter for half the season is going to be back up. I agree. That was a great decision by P.J. Fleck. I think you should go with the hot hand. Tanner definitely has that hot hand as he was named Big Time Freshman of the Week. Um, he had a very accurate deep ball and I think that is very important going well, straight forward. Let's not just look at him as the hot hand. Let's look at him as maybe the bad quarterback between the two. Um, one, Jack Annex that has spent so much of this season in one way or another injured. The Maryland game is what sticks out to me there. Um, obviously, he shouldn't have been playing that game. He was hurt the whole game. He was definitely not ready. Um, Tanner just does, he does seem a lot more decisive in his throws. Um, Zach kind of just sits in the pocket. I, I don't think he was ready. I think he was thrown into a role maybe he shouldn't have. My opinion has changed. Earlier, I, I did think in, 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 at the beginning of the season, Zach was the right choice, but we'll see how the, the season finishes up. I, I think if LaRons were sitting here, he'd agree with me to say that if we would have seen Tanner Morgan in that Maryland game, we might have seen Tanner Morgan from there through this point in the season. And we uh, might not be talking about the quarterback battle between Zach Anderson and Tanner Morgan. This is for Zach. Some quick stats lines. I think was it Tanner is, has passed for thirty for forty six, six five point two percent of his completions, throwing one hundred fifty one yards, uh, three TDs and three interceptions though, and it only been sacked once. Um, but I have to say though, the interceptions I don't agree with because that one interception he had in Nebraska wasn't his fault when Rashad Bateman turned too early. And then bounced off his hands, and then Nebraska picked it up for a touchback. The thing about that is they still record the interception under the quarterback. They can't record an interception under the wide receiver. Yeah, so wide receivers don't get faulted for interceptions. Only these fumbles. That's what it is. Yep. And then uh, Zach's stats line, he's um, passed for 97 to 187, 51.9% of his completions, uh, 1,277 yards, 9 touchdowns, 7 interceptions, and has been sacked 16 times. He's, he's been hit a lot. Uh, there's only 17 sacks on this season. That's pretty brutal. But also, I think it helped when, like, when he beefed up the right side of the offensive line. Oh, like Daniel Falele. Falele. You know, hey, that, boy. that sucked burning that red shirt, but you, you had to do it for the sake of the quarterback. I agree. Like, I don't, like, I like Sam Schluter, but it's just that he was giving up too many pressures and plays, and then it just got to Zach quickly. Like, Blaze is holding his own, I think, on oh, that absolutely. side. But when Daniel came in, like, that Ohio State game, even though we lost that game, that was a better offensive line unit I saw that day, to be honest. People just can't get around him as an absolute unit that he is. <laughs> I mean, he, he, he falls on top of people. He pushes people. There is just not much he can do. Doesn't matter how fast his feet move, they're just not going to get around him. I've said it before, and I'll say it again, so I'll say it now. The second most important position on the football field is an offensive lineman. What's the first? Quarterback. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, no, but uh, Zach is on backup, but he's backup, but he's still slightly injured. Uh, think is a still likely a um, midsection. Midsection injury when he was internally bleeding at the Nebraska game. Right yes, it's still a little bit of the midsection. Um, obviously, the ankle is still kind of there, but you know, if he had to put it be put in the starting role, it wouldn't be a huge deal. But obviously, with the way Tanner performed, there's really, I don't think a we debate. want Tanner to be playing. There's games. there's really no debate on who should be starting right now. Mm -hmm. And so th this will help Zach heal and put him in, in an even better spot as a back. Um, to move on, let's 
let's take a look at the Illini. Um, Griffin, Griffin and I, we're just not going to mention any stat lines, like rankings, because it won't, once we say something, we think we're going to lose this game. So, first thing we'll mention, so the Illini's defensive coordinator, uh, Hardy Nickerson, has resigned earlier this week, citing health reasons. And so the defensive play calling will be taken over by head coach Lovey Smith this Saturday, and probably possibly for the rest of the season. This, um, this came up after he gave up over 700 yards, though, to a Maryland team that is pretty inconsistent. Uh, but so health they, they have shown. I mean, there's probably health, personal reasons <coughs> in there, but, you know, Maryland obviously isn't by any means prolific. They just rolled on across the field oh, that day. They, they did. Yeah. And Matt Canada will drag that team to a bowl game. I, and, think, I think so. And we, we, we will see how that pans out, but I don't see right now how you can't not name Matt Canada their permanent starting head coach. But no, like, after this season, I think if he's not their head coach, I'm like, Maryland has made a dumb decision. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, like, we, see, we, we see the decision they made just a couple days ago. Also, he's been, we're getting off track now, but Matt Canada hasn't had a head coaching gig ever. Like, he's been an OC. Remember, he's been, he was an OC for P.J. Fleck back in Northern Illinois back then when P.J. was a player. Yes. Went on to other OC and, and um, assistant coach gigs. But never played, or that was never not not played, but it was never um, a head coach. So that surprised me. And he's like, it's his time. Yeah, he's looked good this season, and uh, he might make Maryland a little bit of a threat over there in the East. Not that we need another threat in the East. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, there's that, and then there. Are Best defensive players, I think, was it? Um, so defensive end Bobby Roundtree, he's a sophomore. He's one of the essentially one of the best uh, pass rushers. Um, what was the stat? I'm trying to find that. I mean, we could talk stats all day, but the fact is, the fact is, Griffin doesn't care about the numbers. I, I, you know, that's um, not as important. Uh, and the winner if, lost. If you one. ranked 127th out of 129 FBS teams in total defense. You have a problem. Hey, Griffin, can you tell me what 127 and 129 are? Uh, let's see. You mean 128 and 129? No, you said 127. Yeah, yeah the line are 127. Yeah. yeah. But what, what, what are 127 and 129? Uh, numbers. I believe it's Oregon State. Those are, uh, those are numbers, Griffin. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell me I can't have my numbers and just throw out some fucking numbers. And then, um... In their linebacking core, they're one of the best linebackers is Deshaun Phillips, who again is one of the better with Roundtree and Phillips, like one of the only best pass rushers and stuff like that. Because their linebacking core hasn't been doing great, and their um, secondary is very green as a unit. Like they're being led by um, what was it, Stanley Green Jr. in uh, free safety over there. So. Not so great for the Illini defense this year. But what is looking okay is their recruiting. They have two top 100 recruits right now, currently committed, Isaiah Williams and Marquez Beeson, a quarterback and a wide receiver respectively. And they all have huge offers from other Power 5 conference schools. And Illinois is one of those places where a lot of freshmen, um, you can play early and you can play often. There's not a lot of programs that can guarantee that start right away. So I think... I mean, we've been saying this for years, but patience, but we'll see again how it pans out over time. The thing that my question is, even though we're Gopher fans, because, like, you know, we've been through, like, you know, Gophers has been great in terms of, like, coaching, like, you know, cultural sustainability. I, like, I look at Lovey, this is, like, his third year there as head coach. Mm -hmm. Do you think a lot of fans have the patience with him at this moment after this year? Uh, I don't think a lot of my fans do. No, I don't believe that. I get, I get the feeling that the um, athletics department there might have a little bit more patience with Lovey than the fans want them to. Oh, absolutely. I think Lovey might stick around a little bit I mean, longer. He's, he signed a six-year, $21 million deal, I believe, a couple of years back. Oh, he did? Yeah, so I think their, their AD definitely has faith in him, but I don't think the fans do. I mean, he went, he's been 8-24 and 24 overall. Something like that since he's been there. Three and twenty in the Big Ten. I mean, the results just aren't showing. 
Hey, but he's getting wins against Rutgers. <laughs> <laughs> the important thing. So right? one Big Ten win <laughs> that they have. Then again, our only Big Ten win is against Indiana. Better than Illinois. <laughs> True. <laughs> um, but uh, back with the Illini, their offense, um, in terms of their depth, looks like their starting quarterback will be A.J. Bush. Um, he's a senior. He's a grad transfer to the Illini. Um, but at the Maryland go game last weekend, they started freshman M.J. Rivers, who got hurt with a concussion. Um, and Puts him in a really bad spot. Yeah. But the thing with Bush is that he is the more runner than passer kind of quarterback, though. When you have a two quarterback system like Illinois appears to have, and one of your quarterbacks goes down, I don't. Do you feel comfortable putting in your third string guy? Who? Like, to, Matthew Robinson is the name that I've got here. I don't know who he is. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't even look him up. <laughs> or would you rather have AJ Bush throw those passes? that maybe he's not as comfortable with and change your offense. Mm -hmm. I mean, we saw how Adrian Martinez ran against the goal. Then again, there's that, yeah. So if you put Bush in there I'm, and you go, oh, go up against our defense, they might as well just, just run uh, the ball most of the game. Just take the ball up the middle. Mm -hmm. We saw how many 70-plus yard runs in that Nebraska game. Martinez, Zigbo, Spielman probably. And I mean, they've got three running backs here that are all vital. Yeah, um, but it looks like they're probably two, though, because uh, Mike Epstein, their second running back, might be out with injury. He got hurt before Maryland was out for that game. They've still got Corbin. Corbin yeah. can still take the ball. Um, I don't know a whole lot about Bonner, but yeah, we don't know much about him either. Let's um, hope that that limits the amount that they can actually run. So then, to move on, because now we're just talking about both the Gophers and the Illini, like, let's think of keys for the Gophers to win and also not let a meltdown like what happened in the fourth quarter, quarter of Indiana happen again. Like, what are your key takeaways for us to win? Well, the Gophers have always been very good at time of possession. So as long as we can keep running the ball, uh, have some very creative play calling. We saw we see the Wildcat all the time with Seth Green. Um, or those flea flickers? With yeah, those flea flickers. As long as we can eat up the clock, um, our points allowed per game is much lower, and we score just a couple more points per game on average for Illinois. So as long as we can keep running the ball and have an okay passing attack, we should be just fine. Mm -hmm. I mean, the big things here, my takeaways are win the turnover battle. we got to start winning the turnover battle. It's Because I think Indiana recovered three of our fumbles out of five that we made at Rainy game and well, that one interception. Illinois on their season is winning the turnover battle. Yeah. Somehow they're three and five and we're four and four, even though we're losing our turnover battle. But if we can take this opportunity, sort of turn that around and get headed in the right direction, we might we might show up for the rest of the season. And then obviously winning the field position battle, I think obviously turnovers. Your boy Jacob play. Herbers, right? My boy Jacob Herbers though. 41.5 yards a punt, and that special teams unit is holding the net average to 41.16 yards a punt. That's less than half a yard a return. That's really impressive as compared to Illinois. They have about a five-yard gap between punt distance and net average. Mm -hmm. uh, I think for me is... Since you guys mentioned special teams, you know, why are special teams in the Griffin offense? My thing is the defense. Like, Carter Coughlin, Blake Cashman, some of our, like, tackle leaders right there. Of course, we have a... Uh, Nine sacks for Coughlin. Yeah, and then also that defensive line with being anchored by O.J. Smith. I'm not sure if he's playing, though. He was injured the last game. And Royal Silver. It will be heard. crucial. Um, but the, the, my concern, again, is defense, like, can... Because I don't know why, but Ross Smith has been inconsistent throughout the season. Like, I think he should not get comfortable with his job yet. Because, like, after that Nebraska game, fans were calling for his firing. I mean, it was an abysmal performance. Yeah. But let's look at the fourth quarter of the Indiana game. Yeah. Like, what happened there? You give up until, like, many points. Until, like, 22. 
took two crucial plays and Blake Cash and ran through that hole. And on three and third and one, this cat that running back for a loss of five yards. And then Blake Cash from being our best pass rusher, this comes around with a strip sack. And then we recover the fumble and then just need this need the ball and then won the game from there. So. So do we see Tyler Johnson having another hundred yard game? I'm Depends where he is. I'm saying yes. Depends where he is in terms of in terms of his injury. I know he got hurt last week. He was a hamstring, um, I think. It's then it depends on where that hamstring is. Um, obviously, we have other options that we can go to first if Tyler's not a hundred percent. And if we're not going to Tyler consistently, that hundred yard game might not happen. But then again, like what I like about this year's rec uh, wide receiver court compared to last year was that. It was just Tyler. <laughs> and now this year, Rashad Bateman, being a true freshman, he was a four-star when we recruited him last year. Um, he is awesome. Like, even though that Maryland game, we lost that game, there were some good plays. And then, of course, throughout the season, he's been good. And that 67 cold blood touchdown from Tanner Morgan to Rashad Bateman was just great. What I like that this year the about the receiving play. core is... Uh, that it's not Connor Rhoda and Demery Croft throwing the football to him. It's, uh, it's been Zach Anstead and Tan Morgan, and they're much better pure quarterbacks. I think they all just bond well. I mean, like, you see the way they, like, you get a touchdown, they go over and support each other. Altman Bell, Tyler, Rashad, Demetrius Douglas, they're all there. Uh, I haven't seen a tighter knit wide receiver mm -hmm. before in, in a long time, mostly maybe because we haven't had some standout receivers. Yeah, because I think when we came here as students, I think, our first year, KJ May was a senior. It was a senior that year. After that, it was just Drew Volatarski, and then a little bit from Rashad still, and then, well, of course, Drew Volatarski is trying to get in the NFL, and KJ May, and then, um, still transferred out of the program after the first year with PJ. So, you know, there hasn't been much in terms of like our receiver core, but we for, like we mentioned already two names: Johnson and Rashad Bateman. But like we forget, there's Chris Oppen Bell, mm -hmm. who came back from injury. He's, he's been getting better better every game. And Demetrius Douglas, who's now a right receiver, but also our return, returner because uh, Rodney and Antoine are out. And he's been doing fantastic. Absolutely. Well, let's not forget about Seth Green. And Seth Green. Wildcat. Seth Green is technically listed as a wide receiver, but he's kind of doing it all. I, mean, I, I thought they were moving him to tight end, so. That's that was that, was that was the case at spring ball. Like I saw, I was at one of the spring practices. Yeah. I saw uh, Seth Green with the tight end, like Cole Keefe and mm -hmm. uh, Bryce Witham, just like doing blocks. And then all of a sudden, like when we come in the season, it's like, wait, he's listed as wide receiver, and then that wildcat at the first he's game. He's just State. too athletic to not have doing something like that. I totally agree. My question is, can he? Can he? How much can he throw the football? Can we get him to throw the football more, especially this week where we're pretty sure we got a win? Well, let's see what Kirk draws up. Kirk Shiraka. Can't, can't really give an accurate representation when he's only thrown a couple times this year. One of them being a touchdown against Fresno State, the other being an interception. Mm -hmm. I mean, if, Brutal if, if you want him to pass, he can do that. If you want him to run, he can do that. Like, the dude can do anything. Like, why is that athletic? And shout out to Tanner Morgan because he was our first 300 yard passer since October of 2015. The Mitch Leiter era. The Mitch Leiter era? But that was I the game. <laughs> but it was the Michigan game. <laughs> I don't want to be reminded of that game because, like. Oh, God, that's the Mitch. Why? <laughs> <laughs> we don't need that in this podcast. <laughs> a good performance is a good performance. Yeah, but that, that, that did not win well, the game, uh, though. Mitch Leiter put up a good performance, but what about uh, the last interim head seconds. coach Tracy Clays? Wait, well, no, yeah. at, least he, at least he could run a defense. That wasn't 10 seconds. That was like two minutes. Just standing around doing nothing. Sorry, uh, that was 10 seconds, seconds of actual football. Uh, two minutes of uh, game time. And he had to throw the ball into the end zone rather than run it and get a touchdown? Uh. No, because you, you guys remember that. They're just standing there. Doing nothing like that in the huddle, not getting a play call in, and just stood there wasting the eight eight o'clock. The like they do know they just ran in bounds, so then the clock just ticks, 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 and then yeah, that one just that was pretty brutal. Yeah, sorry for the. Anyway, fans. let's just end that 
And that well, let's end that a little tangent. Yeah. And uh, move on to something <laughs> else, a little bit more positive. <laughs> Yeah, so for all uh, our fans, just don't mention that Michigan game and we'll be fine. Alright, moving on. Um, so we're going to our next segment here. So we don't know what to talk about now since we just ended on that bad note. Um, let's, let's have some hot takes going on. Oh god, just give me your hot takes. Alright, uh, DJ Durkin, so we were talking about uh, Matt Canada, like he should be the next head coach because DJ Durkin got reinstated on Tuesday and then got fired on Wednesday. I... Before today, didn't know that DJ Durbin had been <laughs> fired. Um, I'm going to be honest about that. I was completely clueless. But uh, probably the right call. Um, hopefully, Canada steps in and takes that job. I don't think it's that hot of a take to say that Matt Canada has kind of earned that job over the course of this season. He's got some, he's got some big wins. he got Texas. He absolutely stumped us. And the Illini. <laughs> but again, I, but the thing is I see with Matt Canada, what I did not see in Durkin, so Durkin had inconsistency when they played, like in every like the last three, two last two, three seasons at Maryland. But when you look at Matt Canada, yes, they are inconsistent this year, but not to the level that we've seen them to be inconsistent. I does that, does that make sense what I'm trying to say? I don't think it's entirely on the coaching either. I don't think it's entirely Matt Canada's fault that this team is inconsistent. I think that there's some inconsistency in what the players are doing, and you can't always blame everything on the head coach. Mm -hmm. So that's our hot take. Matt Canada's going to be the next uh, head coach of Maryland. Lukewarm take. Lukewarm. <laughs> um, next take is, I think Urban Meyer's going to keep his job at Ohio State. Oh, I, I don't see that as a... How is that hot at no, all? That's not no, hot that's at all. ice cold. <laughs> it's, no, it's ice cold, but the reason I bring that up is because um, he does, there was a news article from Yahoo uh, Sports that they did about um, his health issues because he has um, a constant cyst, I think. He was diagnosed like 20 years ago. And it was because of that cyst or uh, medical condition he had was why he was forcibly retired from coaching in Florida. And then he's like, that's when he retired. And then he came back like months later, like, oh, I signed my contract. I'm going to Columbus for to coach the, the Ohio State uh, Buckeyes. Remember when, Ohio, what's, when what's Florida was consistently good? Yeah. Urban Meyer era was when Florida was consistently good. And now, where's, where's Florida at in the SEC? Low. I know they're doing well. <laughs> they're doing well. They actually uh, I just don't want to see them do well. That's why I said low. <laughs> they did lose to Georgia this past week. True. Georgia. Pretty ugly game. But, oh, I also want to with Florida, uh, one of our offensive line recruits, Curtis Dunlap Jr., he was one of our highest ranked uh, um, recruits. He was initially uh, committed to Florida, and then he decommitted and came to us with the help of a certain Zach Anikstead and Daniel Palalele Jr. Or Daniel Palalele. Second most important position on the football Cause, field. Because all three, like, again, like all three of them were on the same high school team at IMG Academy in Florida, too. So, like, maybe you just really wanted to roll the boat. Yeah, roll the boat, Scott. Roll the boat, Um, You guys got any other hot takes? Should Rob Smith be fired? Should Rob Smith be fired? I'm, the jury's still out for me on that one. I know you're going to say yes. Yes. And I know you're going to probably say yes. I'm saying wait till the end of the season. And I know if LaRons was here, LaRons would say that he should have been fired at the end of last year because LaRons has the spiciest takes. <laughs> I just think, I think the jury's still out. I think, I think wait till the end of the season, see, where, see how they feel at that point. It's probably the smart way to do it. I mean, realistically, you... You come into Big Ten conference play and you give up however many yards to Maryland. If you can't fix it, like at least make it a little bit better. I but feel then like in Nebraska that was like abysmal. <laughs> right, but in a conference that wants to run the damn ball all the time, you Big need Ten to football is about for running the ball up the middle. And what have we had? Swiss cheese. <sighs> Got to shore up that defensive tackle position. No, but I'm it's saying a real trouble spot for us. So my hot take is he'll get fired, but it's not going to be during the season. It'll be after, after PJ and the staff evaluates what went wrong, can it be fixed, and then I mean, go. PJ doesn't want coaching changes. 
like he he's wants to stick with Rob Smith, but again, again it's just can't do it. Smith can't do it. Came from Arkansas. Arkansas is not doing so well right now. Arkansas hasn't done well in a long time. Yeah. Except that one season when he had like a really good senior group. Uh, well, the one season where Ryan Mallett was throwing the football. Back in, <laughs> I don't know, 2010? Whatever year that was. Alright, uh, let's take one more hot take and then we gotta wrap this up. You got one? <sighs> Not off the top of my head. Do you got one? Um, you wanna talk about the Big Ten West? No. <laughs> Who you got winning the Big Ten West, Griff? Northwestern. Northwestern. I think it's a little bit spicy. What? I think it's a little bit of a spicy take. Northwestern winning the West? You I won mean, Wisconsin? They got some grit. The players got grit. Where's Iowa sitting? Like Where's what? Iowa sitting in the Big Ten West? Pretty high up. They've been they've been real quiet. Are they like seventeenth maybe? They they 15th? lost to us they lost to Wisconsin, but what's that mean? Moment here. I mean, I was, I I was defense has stepped up. Anthony Nelson has six and a half sacks. I He's bet they still got the a game against Northwestern, too. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely, I do. I was uh, one of those teams. If you would have asked me at the beginning of the season, I would not have said Northwestern. But if you would have asked me at the beginning of the season, I would have said Wisconsin, hands down. Really? Uh, if you, you're asking me now, I think uh, Wisconsin might be in a little bit of hot water there. So Big Ten Chris West. Ash. So here's the Big Ten West. So Northwestern's first, next is Wisconsin, third is Iowa, fourth is Purdue, and then fifth is Nebraska, Minnesota, and Illinois. Well, Purdue's Purdue's getting themselves in trouble. They're losing games that they just shouldn't be losing. But then somehow beat the Ohio fourth ranked Ohio State at the time. But when you have a player like Rondell Moore, Purdue You're should have do some damage. Purdue's what four and four? Four and four. Um, they're three and two in the Big Ten. Purdue is four and four, and their record is absolutely not where it should be. They should have at least two more wins. And don't commit personal foul penalties within inside a minute. Yeah, because like I remember the first three games of the season, um, Purdue like Blew it. they like they no they were zero and three in the beginning of the season. Yep. Should and they have lost to Northwestern? Wasn't Northwestern no. 0 3 at the beginning of the season, too? No, because Northwestern beat them in the first So it's 1 and 2. two. Northwestern two. lost all of its non conference games. Oh. Yep. So. And I believe Northwestern hasn't lost in the Big Ten yet. Nope, they lost one game. Oh, they lost to Michigan, didn't they? Michigan. So they're 5 and 1, but they're still leading the Big Ten West by like two games against Port Wisconsin. Northwestern has a serious chance to win the Big Ten West. It's just a matter of. They've got Iowa on the schedule at some point. Mm -hmm. If they can take down Iowa, they're in a really good spot. And also, here's the next thing. Since we just talked about the West, the East, Michigan's 5-0 in Big Ten play. Michigan's only loss is against Notre Dame, and Notre Dame's been a really good football team. Because mm -hmm. Ohio State's now 4-1 because of that loss to a Purdue. I think Michigan's defense is actually ranked. Michigan's uh, got a... What, easily top five. I, I, they might be number one. Jim Harbaugh's got a really good football team about four years coming after coming into this program. Um, you don't want to start Alex O'Korn again? <laughs> <laughs> no, I... I'm so not sold on Jim Harbaugh just because it's his fourth season. He's in a contract year, I believe. But then again, he's been here four years. He's got all his guys in the program right now. Mm -hmm. um, either because he wanted them to stay for that fifth year or because he actually recruited them in. So um, then, since we just talked correct up with our East and West divisions, so just just our predictions, no, no discussion, just to wrap things up with this podcast. Um, it's going to be hard. Who's gonna be the, who's gonna, who are the two teams you go see in the Big Ten Championship? I'll say mine first if you guys want time. I'm yeah. saying Michigan and Northwestern, where we're currently uh, sitting in the season. Man. How far back is Iowa? They're three and two right now. They're two games behind uh, Northwestern. Oh, fuck. <laughs> and Wisconsin's 
basically the same. Yep. Oh, no. Right now, I'm calling it. There's going to be no red teams in the Big Ten Conference. Uh, it, it comes down to who wins Michigan, Ohio State, and uh, who wins Northwestern Iowa. That's really what it comes down to for me. Here's the thing. I don't want to explain it. I need who's your two teams. we got to wrap this up. If I have to pick <laughs> now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take Michigan-Iowa. Okay. Give me Michigan-Iowa. All right. I was going to say Michigan and Iowa as well. Oh. Oh. Here's, I did say Northwestern earlier, but. Here's a fun one. I want to throw this out. I think Gophers getting six. You just sold Northwestern really high. And Northwestern is uh, win six for me. So I'm thinking, you may hate me for this, so I'm saying we win the next three of our four games. You're giving us three of four? And Excuse next. me? Sorry. <laughs> no, 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 the last four games we have left in the season, oh. I'm saying we're winning three of those four games. We're, nah. You think, you think no? Get out of here. <laughs> Get out of this room. <laughs> you think we're going 4 0 in the last four games? I think we're going 1 and 3. Really? I think we're taking Illinois and then we're getting it from Purdue, Northwestern, and Wisconsin. Okay. Well, I'll these, are, these are teams that have been very good football teams most of the season. I'm going to call 6 and 6. I'm going to say they're going to take... Who we beat? Well, obviously, Illinois. And then Northwestern. You think we're taking Northwestern? I think we're taking Northwestern. I think if we take Northwestern, that's Iowa's best chance to get into the Big Ten championship Ooh. game. Um, I think, honestly, at this point, I'm not sure Northwestern or Purdue is right. more reasonable. That's the big problem. I see us taking Northwestern because we've both been dominant at home. It seems like the Gophers don't know how to play on the road. I'll be the I'll be the pessimist this week. I'll say we're five and seven. But would you be okay with we're five and seven but won the axe? Absolutely. Oh, I'll take a I'll one and eleven. Season how is that a question? <laughs> <laughs> well, there's that, folks. So you'll hear we we all agree that if you and we did not go bowling but we won the axe, we're okay. Worth it. Worth it. <laughs> All right, That's so, the only trophy I need. <laughs> I'd like to thank you for everyone for tuning in to the first ever episode of Oak, a podcast featuring myself, your host Jason L, along with Wyatt Oakers and Griffin Most. And hopefully next time we can get Laurence here and get his hot takes and input for this podcast. And that boy's spicy. He's with us in spirit. He is with us in spirit. Um, get that go for it. Yeah, yeah, there we go. <laughs> He's right there. All right, so thank you for tuning with us. We'll be... Do the maybe another episode next week for the uh, Purdue matchup, but we'll see you guys next time. Thank you.